Scott and Arbor. As wrestling fans, we are no strangers to tragedy. Jake Lloyd Bacon, that's very true. Recently, we lost Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt, and we haven't had a chance to talk about them, and we wanted to do that on the show. Uh, it just goes to show you that uh, you never know any given moment could be our last with anybody. Well, except Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, no, that dude is immortal. Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt tribute today on Pro Wrestling Huskies. Hey there, Scott Narver. Hey, Jake Lloyd Bacon. Um, hello to everybody joining us out there in uh, the Palski Nation, especially those joining us live via the super exclusive patron-only live stream. Uh, you can only get access to that by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash pwpalskis. Uh, Scott, it's 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 late here for me. It's uh, you know Now that we're bi-coastal, we're bi-coastal Palskis. Um, it's, it's a lot more nighttime for me than it is for you. Do you have to go walk the streets now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to sell my body. That's how it is in New York. That's New York yeah. living. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, you, you enter the state and they say, uh, which time slot would you like? And, uh, I signed up for, uh, for 9 PM, uh, on Sundays. It's the Lord's day. I thought it was only fair. You enter the state, the state enters you. <laughs> Um, that's what uh, says when it not, says welcome to New York and, but, and the population also, but you mean the state, the sketch group from the nineties that recently just reunited for a bunch of shows in New York city. They're the ones who will be entering me. Oh, Joe Latruglio, please <laughs> enter Jake. I mean, if it's going to be anybody, let's speak, let's talk about Ken Marino. That dude's a hunk. I was going to say, who's the little wispy guy? <laughs> um, there are, it's, there was a bunch of comedy nerds from the nineties. They're mostly little wispy guys. Well, it was Carl, like, uh, in the, in the burger sketch with like, a uh, Carl, right. And the man asked for a grape soda. Yes. He wants a grape soda. You're who's talking, Carl? uh, that's Robert Ben Garant. Who's also no, junior. No, 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 no. That's he's yelling. Oh no. He's yes. You're Carl. right. 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 Um, I forget that guy's name. He doesn't do I know, fucking no, shit on that show. He probably not, did a lot. Well, because he was staged. He was one of the primary directors, I believe. Okay. Like, so there's there's those two guys who like weren't on camera as as much. But yeah, anyways, they're all fantastic. I love every one of them. I hope that guy answers you. Just um, for safety's sake. Me too. Uh, well, anyways, um, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna chat. Oh, uh, hey everybody, not safe for work. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. God forbid. Um, we're going to be chatting here, uh, tonight about some, uh, some, uh, great folks that we lost. Um, and it's going to be kind of sad, <laughs> but also, you know, uh, listen, uh, it's, it's, it's wrestling, it's life. And, uh, it's almost a, a bummer. The shock of it isn't what it used to be because I feel like we lose so many wrestlers young, obviously for varying reasons. And that isn't like a, you know, there's, the tragedy here uh, regarding Wyndham Rotunda is, you know, it's medical in nature is what I'm trying to get at versus. Quick question. Were you asked to speak at either Terry Funk or Wyndham Rotunda's uh, services? Yeah, both of them. Hmm. Shocking. Yeah, both of them. And uh, I pretty much was like, you know, not that hey, shocking these days. Gotta hey, be honest, right? It's kind I mean, of who uh, hears me, huh? Listen, pulling out his tie. It's a little bit. Huh? It's a little bit. Uh, we're a little bit numb to this, aren't we? Anyways. Uh, no, are was this numbing to you in that like eh? No, because I die. well because I didn't because I had no idea that there was anything wrong. Terry Funk was really old. Uh, yeah, but he seemed like he had a few more matches. In him. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, that guy never quit. Yeah, with Rotunda, it was there was something. I don't even know if we talked about it on the show because it was just a, it was treated as such a small thing. Like, oh, he's taking time off due to medical right. reason. Right. And when you just don't get specifics for stuff like that, when injuries happen all the time or who knows what it is, you just go, oh, okay. Well, 
Right. Why would they? Why would they take any more time off than necessary? They they're getting back in the ring. They're doing more stuff. Also, we'll see it, soon. in the era of COVID, when they don't necessarily want to promote everybody who got COVID throughout the years, it you hear, oh, he's taking off for medical. If it's like, oh yeah, a, few, a couple of weeks for COVID quarantine, maybe or whatever, you know, like you just don't know. You have no idea. And also, he's got a bunch of kids. So right, the second that happens, once you start, you you reach that point in your in, in your adult life, and either you have kids or you know a bunch of people that have kids, and you go, hey, you want to hang out and do something? Like, I'm sick. Again, you were just fucking right. sick a week and a half ago. I know, but my kids go to school. Right. This is just it's just a breeding ground of bacteria germs. factory. Yeah. And we're just we're just forever sick until yeah. they're seventeen. Um. But yeah, yeah, like you said, it's not it. It didn't cause for alarm when they when mm-hmm. we knew he was taking time off because it just felt like yeah. And also, like we, I, I it does seem like we knew that he there was something wrong with him because this did happen previously. Um, around the time that that something happened with him and uh, I think we were supposed to get something between him and uh, and Finn Balor at one point, but then they had to, to pivot because he couldn't make it, um, and they pulled someone else in. I, I, my memory's fuzzy on that, but I do remember oh, at the, one point the demon versus um, it might have been yeah yeah it was supposed to be the demon versus uh, uh sister Abigail or something like that, or or and and it kind of didn't happen because uh because Wyndham got sick or something she's not real. Well, there's that too. He, you know what? He put the wig on. He went, I changed my mind. Ooh, you know what? Vince? I think this is in poor taste. I know you it's know only what? 2017. You know what, Vince? I changed my mind. Yeah, um, I'm, lo- I'm looking it up. It looks like it was TLC 2017, the demon Finn Balor versus Sister Abigail. They had a graphic, so it, ha- right. it had to happen. Right. And um, looking to see if there's much in regards to. Uh, oh, we got Finn versus AJ instead. AJ, that's what it was. Right, right. Uh, Styles, not Lee. Don't worry, everybody. I mean, it's a, it's a great match. Those two bubble, the two of them with those cute little butts they got between the, the geez, that's, a, that's four sweet cheeks in that match. Wait, who else has got a sweet cheeks? Um, Mr. Ass. Because uh, uh, I don't look at guys' asses. Well, you're missing Just out. Little girl's asses. You're missing out. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. But anyways, uh, where 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 were we? <laughs> we're talking. Uh, we're morning I lost our people thread. that yeah. we that we liked as as TV characters. I I was certainly very confused and very thrown. It didn't hit me that hard emotionally. Like I I talked with some friends that right. were just really kind of shook by it. Yeah. It, really, just like oh man, oh man, and to what degree that was that whether it's you know, mortality, thinking of your own or right. just being sad for the person. I think it, it varied. And I was just, I think just sad for him and his family. It's just that how was that how one kind of hit. Not so much the like, oh, I want more Bray on television. It's just like, oh man, it seemed like he had a, a really rocking thing going yeah, and, in life and he seemed pretty content. And like, uh, so I, I'm pretty sure it happened like a day or two before Alexander and I had hit the road. And we were obviously in like, you know, moving nightmare, packing nightmare with stuff going in storage units. It was all over. And I remember, just, I vividly remember we had already, we didn't have a couch anymore. We got rid of the couch. So we just had like a couple chairs around the living space. Like the TV was on the floor because we had a TV, you know, we sold a TV stand. It was that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And I remember like having my phone out and just saying like, and seeing it on Twitter and just like some sort of thing about like, you know, he passed away and just saying to Alexandra, like Bray Wyatt died. And there was just this moment and it was just like, she was like, Does, doesn't he have kids? And I was like, yeah, he's got a lot of kids. And like, and I, I always think about, and immediately I thought back to, to John. I'm just like, gosh, like what, like everything that we felt about like John being this incredible family man. And now here's like another friend of his that we associate so closely with him, mm-hmm. um, like leaving behind this family and, 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 you know, yeah, one of them, I believe, is the youngest is not that old. Is you probably not going to remember much of of their father. Like it's just that to me, it's just so sad to me. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's yeah. really bizarre to think about that. I think thirty seven, as far as age, yeah, somewhere around yeah. there sounds right. Because that was weird. I I when when I had heard it, I don't know why, and I feel like this maybe this happens across the board amongst just 
famous deaths because I think it's a little different when it's someone directly you know. You wouldn't wouldn't do what I'm about to describe that I did. But I I reached I immediately reached out to my brother and to Shane Hartline and like I had a bunch uh, some other people text me at that same moment or like send me a DM and it was just Bray Wyatt died. Right. Like I just sent it. Right. I don't know why. I think I might have posted on the Discord too, just that. And then I think Triple H's tweet was the first announcement of it. And that felt the most official. Uh, look, if you want to know uh, that this is real, here's what I can show you to right. prove to you I'm not fucking with you or I'm not telling you a joke. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why it was just like Bray Wyatt died. I got to send this to people. I don't know if it was a, I'm first to say right. it. I hope it wasn't that. Yeah. I don't know if it was trying to compartmentalize what happened or make it real or it wasn't asking for, Hey, did you hear this? Is this really fucking real? But maybe that's what the intent was. It, I was very thrown in the moment and was reaching out to wrestling friends confused. Right. And just, it did. Yeah. Only text it, like Bray Wyatt died. And again, like, not dissimilar to 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 Brody Lee, and also like I don't know I think I don't know why just because it was such a huge because like obviously as wrestling fans you don't everybody knows who Bray Wyatt is at this point he's been around long enough and he's made such an impact in in so many different ways character work and all this stuff um, the iconic you know images that he created but you just walk up to anybody on the street and you go like Bray Wyatt died and they go I don't know who that is it reminded me of the, a much bigger cultural recent one, which was like Chadwick Boseman dying. And it just felt like nobody even knew that he was ill, that he had any, you know, problems. Meanwhile, the entire yeah, time, the, the guy Norm was just silently way of it Norm too, just like, yep. Wait a minute. Right. You know, it, it, it yeah, there is, there's, it reminds me of that where there's a sort of like, wait, how can that be? Like, it, you know, there's a little bit of a shock to the reality, like a shock to your system about like, well, that's not real. <laughs> like like that some somebody just tweeted that or something. Yeah, this doesn't compute. He's he's he was 36. 36, yeah, I'd love um, that up too, yeah. Born in 87. Who, who had died uh from an ongoing heart condition. It's like he had died in his sleep. Yeah. And that he was not wearing a doctor recommended a heart defibrillator at the time of his death. Yep, that's that that's what I read. Which is like, uh, I mean, and, and it's it's an, it's easy for us to just be like, well, if you just did what they said, you wouldn't have died, and it makes it easy to be like to like put blame or we you know feel that, but it's also we just you don't know, we have no idea the situation. We don't know the comfort level where it's like I haven't exactly. been able to sleep for the past week because I'm wearing this thing, and it's right. I ju I'm just gonna take it off. What can one night? That 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 phrase, that saying that, just like, what could it hurt if I just do this one time? What's the worst that can nothing's happen? Nothing's going to go wrong. Right. Yeah, and we we don't know, and we don't know it fell off, whatever it was. It's just, um, I don't know. I don't want to make uh, import taste shitty jokes. They're all in my brain, and I'm trying to filter them. Uh, yeah, I get so, it. Yeah, no, we're 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 the same person, you and I. We deal we deal with trauma through dumb comedy. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to put off all the listeners with all that stuff. They'll, they'll be peppered in, but it will hopefully in more taste. But right. it's just, it's just, it's unfortunate. And this, this kind of thing can happen to people all the time, and we don't know about it because they're not on our television. They're not a character that we know of, and it's just something, you know, small and insignificant to us. Where it's like, wait, it was just, it was just that, but. Who knows what kind of pain he was going through? Because in all the time that he had he had been back, he only wrestled the one match, the one at the Royal Rumble, the Pitch the, black. the one that got us to drink our now favorite soda of all time. It really is that good. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, no, yeah, the, that that was his only his only like uh, sanctioned match, other than just getting into skirmishes and fights. Yeah, and then it this was some time later where it's. Yeah, we're we, at the conference. He was talking like, "Yeah, we're going to do something else. We're going to plan something else. This took a lot of effort, and we're going to do something else again soon." So, how much of that was, you know, his medical condition, or how much of that was? Oh, we're trying to figure out the next program, and we're right. really trying to think of something big and something with spectacle. Do but something it was well. Certainly it, odd to that try to pay it off. Going, 
that's weird. He's not at WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, where, where is he at? What's going on? And we just assumed there was something else happening or some bigger plan and not really considering, As- well, this young man's sick. Especially because the nature of his character is that where he can be, I mean, even dur- during the Fiends, like highlight of that run, he barely, he was barely around. That's what made it so great. Is that once the lights, once that creepy thing happened and the lights went black and you knew he was coming, it was like, it felt really special. And so if they're trying to recreate that kind of magic, it's like, yeah, he's just not around a lot because that's what makes it exciting when he is. Yeah. Um, do you have, uh, do you have, uh, let, let, let's speak, you know, about, about the, the career and, and, and the, the, the incredible highs, like. Do you have a recollection of when he became on your radar? Because you weren't watching NXT of that era like I was. Right. And so was him just coming up to the main roster the first time that you had really seen him? Obviously, I'm talking not Husky Harris. (laughs) Let me preface. Post Husky Harris. Husky Harris took balls. I, Dude, I love the idea of a tank with a Ferrari engine. That was a great visual and a great little, like, that's a great hook. And, you know, I, I was I was all in on that, even just as a gimmick and wearing the boots, wearing the, old, the, the, the you know, like I like the name I, Husky. Like, that's your first name. Husky. Yeah, Husky. All right. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I, I am Husky Harris. You are. This is OK. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. Hey, this is Rotunda's kid. Like, cool. Cool. Yeah. Let's I can't wait to see what it's going to be. And then. You know. That was the second NXT group. Yep. Turned, turned, turned Nexus. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Nexus group. Um, yeah. And curious to see what was going to be. But then Pug got pulled on all that and a lot of repackaging was done. And then when we see him again, when I'm introduced to him is on the main roster. I had heard murmurs of it and seeing what it was and seeing the Greg on chanting Husky Harris. At I him. remember that. Cause it was like, he didn't get any of that in NXT for obvious reasons. That little crowd there yeah. is like, they're all in on whatever they are. You're giving to them at the performance center at that point or wherever they were full sale. But, uh, but yeah, I remember it just like, because I love, I thought, th- I thought what him, Luke and Eric were doing in NXT was so fucking good and weird. And the song, the package, the rocking chair, everything about it, his promos were, they reminded me of, Everything that we talk about Jake uh, doing where he spoke quietly to make you lean in, right? But then Mm -hmm. there was a little bit of that like preacher that would click in where he would start real quiet, but then he would get really, really loud. And he had this preacher like quality, which is why I love this sort of like cult leader vibe that he had of like, I could get people would being like, yeah, like the way that he speaks, it's very preacher like, it's very like, you know. And, and God, I just fucking thought he was doing the so good. Fucking and then he, snake wrangler. Yeah, but then he came up to the main roster. People were like, oh, it's Key Harris. I was like, fuck you guys. I was such like a NXT fanboy nerd. I was such a hipster. Like, you guys, you don't know. It's really good. Just shut up and listen to him. Well, that that was around the time when I, I think Compadres was just beginning or starting. And that was when I was more in tune with the internet culture of it all. Because like I had done Curtain Jerks. Right, yeah. And we didn't really give a shit about like what the internet was saying about something. Right. We only wanted to pull from it. If it was like something it was, we can make fun of. It was of. topically comedy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And more making fun of the community about it. Yes. But it felt like you guys are just going, I remember you. Right. And you were this guy, but what he's doing transcends any of that. 100%. You got to go that. Yeah. That was six months ago, but that doesn't right. matter. What he's doing right now is something really fucking cool. Right. He's not, it's not Husky Harris turned into Fandango. No, no. It's not, I'm a dancing weird guy. They're making me do this now. Right. You can you can point that one out all day long. That's fine. Right. R- skip, He's not doing Skip that. Sheffield to Ryback, where you're like, yeah, what does you, Ryback even mean? <laughs> okay, Skip. You know, like, and obviously yeah, even that they made skip work. All day. But yeah, like. This, this though was, he, he owns it. He's into it. He's doing something. He's really connected this material. The only thing that I remember being very confused by was, wait a minute. So he's backstage. He lights a lantern. All the guys gather around. He blows it out. They say, we're here. He blows it out. Then he walks out and it's lit again. Yeah, that always bugged me too. I don't understand. That always bugged me. And then 
I was then won back over when I saw the logistics of it when I went to a live event yeah. and saw that all three dudes, the three massive fucking men, yeah. Eric Rowan, yeah. Luke Harper, and Bray Wyatt, all are just human centipede t- yes. together. Tiny. And they're and and they're and being so close to be in the frame for the camera of their over his shoulder, and then one of them's dragging the rocking chair behind him. Right. And there's no space. They all got a fucking little dude tiptoes walking down to the ring. <laughs> I and love when you this. See it, I love this visual. When you see it, you go, that's fucking crazy. But on TV, right. none of that registers. No. It just looks fucking cool. Yeah. But if you just watch them, you go, that's a little silly. You got to hit your marks. But, yeah. But again, they were better than what you actually saw. You're right. Yeah. Like, that's how good it was. And I I think... um. One of the things that really solidified that whole package in that group and Bray and everything for me was, I think it's Survivor Series. I don't remember what year, but the fucking poster of Bray in the rocking chair, right? And the two guys holding gators over their shoulders yep, with like with like a single light or something, yeah, something like yeah. that. It that is one of the I'd say last best wrestling pay per view posters, right? Where it's if you're if you're going to a bar or whatever, like whatever they used to be, right, where right. You, they're advertising a WWE pay per view, you go, those guys are on that show. Yeah, I won't fucking watch them. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's crazy. Who are these guys? Yeah, and that was that was a that was a presentation to the world where I go, this works. This is really great, and I I'm into these guys. Yeah, yeah, I I I definitely feel like. Uh, had you watched the NXT stuff that led to those moments, I think you would have been hooked earlier. Cause I think like they didn't, what I did like about them is they didn't really change very much. Like they just kept doing what they were doing. There's, I will say there's one promo that I would tell you to look up because I just think it's, so, it's just that good. And it was one of those early introducing what we're doing here, promos from NXT. And I think, cause they started, they started doing what they were doing before they turned FCW into NXT and was broadcasting it on WWE Network, right? Mm-hmm. So there was a little bit of build that we didn't get to see, right? Because it wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's some, I don't know, maybe it was on YouTube. I don't know. I, I didn't know where FCW was watched. But then when they turned, you know, that into NXT and it was just a show you could watch on the network that was just turning developmental into a TV show, I think there was a little bit of like, well, we have to kind of, get situated here and introduce people, you know, and there's this one promo Mm -hmm. and you talk, we always talk about like, you know, keep it simple. Right. And like, there are those people who they try to get their shit in and it's too many things, you know, Bray Mm -hmm. cuts this promo and in one promo, he establishes his goals as the hero and or villain, depending on how you look at him as this cult leader, right. Introduces the family, um, gets in the singing of it's a, uh, or I got the whole world gets in the follow the buzzards gets in like the cryptic, uh, long winded quotes that he was. I feel like at the times he was lifting from like old poetry and stuff like that, that he was trying to find song like, lyrics. And yeah. He, he, and it's, it's, there's, it's one of those things that that has that old school vibe that used to happen where he, it's someone right. just pulling one lyric and then can spin off. From right. That. Yeah. But it, it just feels like one of those things that in anybody else's hands, you would be like, okay, t- cut. This is too much. You're doing too many different things, but he fucking th- threaded the needle and he like perfectly went from one piece to the other piece that it all just felt like, yeah, that was the natural transition was singing a fucking song, you know? And then I think, I think he even might sing a, like a fucking Skinner song or something at the end of it. Uh, something about time. Um, I can't remember it, but I almost, I got, I wish I was set up right now that I could just play it and it could just record and be broadcast. But like, I didn't plan ahead and I usually need to do that, but I highly suggest you watch it because it's just one of those. If great someone raised the promos. promo that Jake's yeah. talking about and pull it, put it in the, Discord. I'll try to find it, but man, it's just, it's just great. Yeah. Um, time. Oh, it's at the end of it. It's where he's time on my side. Yeah. And time is always on my side. Yeah. That that's what it is. Right. Not Skinner, but, uh, fuck. He's just, he was so, so charismatic. And tapping into that tar- that character, that like Cape Fear, backwoods, Louisiana uh, cult leader, 
that 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 to me was everything and i not that i didn't like and it was untapped i think that was the other cool part the untapped it was it was something that didn't seem like a far reach he had the look it and it wasn't something the look of it like i could never have pictured because when i saw when i went to wrestlemania 30 in new orleans right and you know i'd say every year you see a a fair amount of who's who's the one the the fans are connecting with the most because you're going to see right as as if there's an element of cosplayer i can wear that or i like that part of the outfit i can wear that too right i think for all non-wrestling fans that you're in new orleans they were watching and going why are there so many simpsons comic book guys walking around i don't understand <laughs> Right, with like the the Hawaiian shirt, not quite Hawaiian, but whatever you call that, sort of like Hawaiian ish shirt. Yeah, yeah, the Hawaiian print and then the 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 khaki pants. And if they weren't wearing that hat, you go, that's fucking comic book guy. And then, right. the, but everybody had that. <laughs> to me, like I don't that hat doesn't do anything for me. I don't know what's called. I think it's a goofy little hat. But yeah. on Bray, I'm like that fucking hat works. Right. Nobody's wearing that hat. Nobody's got nobody's got that look, and it's not a ridiculous look and it, it looks like it all just works and, and fits and we talk about this all the time i believed it i believed him mm-hmm. it didn't seem like Wyndham rotunda just putting on a completely different character from whoever it is he is it seemed like a part of who he is it seemed like i think his interest in horror and all that stuff like it it allowed him to just sort of tap into this thing that that he can live in instead of put on. There's a big difference. There's a lot of wrestlers who put on their gimmicks like they are just Halloween costumes. And that, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, there are other wrestlers who live in their gimmicks. And I don't mean live in the gimmick. (laughs) I mean, I mean who like they find life inside of whatever it is they're trying to do. That is fully for his characters, mankind check where it's, I'm at the building now and all right, I got like four hours. I'm going to go listen to my music. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the places I need to go for the show tonight. And then I'm going to leave it when I, when I leave. Yeah, absolutely. But it's the method. It's, I mean, and you know, you speak, portion you it. said, the second you said fully, I immediately thought like, yeah, like Austin, same thing like that. Like Austin, he found a, an actual living person inside of whatever stone cold Steve Austin ended up becoming. Um, Richard Klinsky. Yeah, exactly. And also equally the failures prior, like the ringmaster was just him wearing that like a costume. I'm just, I'm just wearing the ringmaster now, but he didn't, yeah. he didn't, you know, and yeah, Bray just had it there. I feel like at that and, point he had it. And to the points that you're talking about with the horror elements of, all right, Taker and Kane sit up. They've got the Michael Myers of it all. Right. Okay. Yeah, the the, the monster well, that can't be killed, which eventually he would tap into, but not for a long time. And who knows if that was thrust upon him? <laughs> You're not wrong, because the crowd loved it. Right. Uh, the what, what's the inverse of that? Like, oh, there's the ring girl of the the contorted body. Like, right. Hey, I can do this. I can fucking bend over backwards and right. pop up and look real weird and. If I laugh and the other person sells it to all the credit of all the people early on that went like the fuck and back up right. and get terrified that they make it an element of he's unconventional. He's not doing what anybody else does. He's laughing in this moment and the kiss before sister Abigail the kiss. I, also a- the kiss is so good. And what used to lead to sister Abigail, which was after running in and the guy's just lifeless in the corner holding him. And dancing and doing like that one or two Aww. little dance move. You remember when he used to do that? I don't. Yeah, he would. So he would do a splash into the corner. Okay. And mm-hmm. the guy would just be lifeless and like draped over him. And so he would pull the guy who would just like not, you know, he'd be unconscious essentially, which I thought helped because Sister Abigail is such a hard move. I always hated when he got like a surprise Sister Abigail because I always thought like, why is the guy just laying there? Like he should be fighting. Like, I yeah. Got All right, do it. Yeah. Stop it's... fucking pandering. So, this is uncomfortable. So he would knock the guy unconscious on the corner and then drape the the unconscious uh, competitor over himself facing forward and hold one of his lifeless arms out. And then move backwards and then drop him into the sister Abigail. And I just remember thinking like, that's so fucking creepy. Like that is like, mm-hmm. we talk about, you know, like again, like the stone cold killer, uh, you know, uh, this is a whole other version of like the horror murderer 
who dances with you lifeless body right before he kills you. <laughs> like, yeah, so, I, I was like, oh, it's nice that they get a little kiss. Yeah, he gets a little kiss to say goodbye. A little kiss before you get knocked out. Yeah, I mean, man, I, just, I remember the that pieces um, were together. They were all there. That, that 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 WrestleMania where there was nothing on the card for him. There was nothing going on, and it was all the. It, it was like he's doing something with Rock. Something's going right. on with Rock. Like he's doing that, and we got to talk to him on the show that uh, uh, that weekend, and it seemed like he was really giddy. And then seeing that all come to life, it was Rock and Cena and the Wyatt family all having this fucking epic encounter. Mm-hmm. And this is when they're white hot. So it's, it was so cool to see that rewarded. Right. To see that, uh, come to fruition of like, Hey, what's something that we got? That's really huge. This let's right. get our biggest stars involved and have them fucking throw them together. And like, we need to I'll have you, these big things happen. We talked about this ages ago and I've brought it up a few times, you know, Taker is one of my all time favorites. I love like I, I undeniably one of my favorite wrestlers is one of the things that kept me like interested in wrestling as a kid. And, and I just I fucking love the guy. That interaction that they had with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the brothers of destruction. Where they beat him and then just carried them out of the ring, I thought was literally the best possible ending for the Undertaker <laughs> as a character. Um, I like, I don't, I, it was just, I remember in the moment just thinking like, and then the deem the other, the new demons brought the old demons back to whence they came. And it just felt like so good and why it sold it so well. Um, and that I was always bummed that Taker showed up again <laughs> after that. I was like, no, that was such a good way to get rid of those characters without doing the tacky retirement shit that we tend to do. Yeah, they took him. Took him. I wish uh, more them. Wyatt, more Wyatt turned family members stayed a little bit longer. Like I know Daniel Bryan was super fucking hot, and that I, when, I, he, when he was wearing the jumpsuit, and the because he had the crazy and he was beard. turned, yeah. But honestly, that that and did, like no, no, not you, not you, and it's like yeah, fucking take people. But that take, t- that paid bring off. Bring more people in. Yeah, I would argue that that did pay off really well. The Daniel Bryan one of him being like, now you're trapped in here with me, like that. I was like, fuck yeah, <laughs> like that was really cool. And I think that they worked out. It was well, just really so well. short. I it, yeah, you're not wrong. You're hundred. I, I think that was the the one bummer because because they didn't ever get anybody else. Like I think Cena had to join for a little while, but yeah, Cena didn't want to. And well, Orton joined. Know, Ron and, just showed up and was a part of the group. There wasn't there wasn't ever taken people in because while you no. get to see the origins of like yeah, Luke show up and Eric show up, right. we never. I, all these people in the crowd are holding up their cell phones and showing the flashlights, right. and it's like. Every one of these people want to join. Right. I'm hoping. Who else? I, I, I'd always had the hope that someone actually does want to join, but right. you don't want to also water it down and add people. No, that aren't I was already bothered worthy of it. That Strowman, I thought Strowman was, was terrible. I thought that was when I started losing my interest in the Wyatt family because I didn't like him. Um, But uh, cause he wasn't scary to me. Yeah. But then you, you turn around real quick on that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when I won the you tag call, titles said, with call him the at Braun WrestleMania. Family. Uh, call them the Strowmen. The the WrestleMania where we were introduced to, it was him and Orton fighting, and then the ring, like he used these crazy powers of, then the ring like had maggots projected on them and worms and decaying things. And I thought, this is something that is so bizarre, but I could get into because it's, it's ultimately like Ray, uh, uh, Bray pulling mind tricks and trying to fuck with Orton. But Uh, I remember being so bummed that Orton went like, nah, I'm not really scared of that. Yeah. (laughs) It's not a big deal. The idea of him playing mind games is brilliant, but only if they work. (laughs) Cause then you're, you're, you're undercutting the gimmick that you're trying to get over with the crowd. It's got to at least work on the crowd. And if it doesn't work on the other competitor, it's never going to work on the crowd. That's why. Yeah. That was when you chop. That's why when you, when you would do something to the undertaker and it wouldn't affect him, the guy would go, Oh shit. And then the crowd, we with this crowd would be like, you can't hurt him. He's impervious to pain. You know, we needed the other guy to know that. 
Yeah. I think it was cool that, you know, he won the, uh, the championship. I was there for that elimination chamber, seeing that moment, like the unlikely guy who's, who falls under the special attraction category is the champion. I think the transition to being the, the, the talk show host, not the talk show, but the children's show host, the children's show host and doing that version of the character and teasing what the fiend is and the intrigue of all that. Like, and, and how, really how long that went on for. Yeah. He had, he had so much cool stuff. He had so much neat shit going on. Just a really creative mind. And I hope, I hope I know that in that time that he was gone, that he went and shot that movie. Oh shit. He was, putting together some horror movie and I'm hoping that that gets put together in whatever way it needs to and that we get to see I what mean, he was working on. There's absolutely no chance that uh if it's even in remotely in pre-production that it's not listed on IMDb Pro. Uh let's see. Bray why yeah that that's curious I'm curious about that. Oh, nope. That's a different actor. Oh, there was an actor named Bray Wyatt a long, long time ago. Wyndham Rotunda. Oh. Yeah. No uh, gunslinger named Bray Wyatt. There's nothing There's nothing in the pre-production set. So I mean, may, may, maybe it is hopefully just, uh, you know, it's still a secret or still so early, but um, doesn't look good based on what is usually listed on here. Yeah, the yeah, only it was upcoming like six projects. productions. It was his Twitter, and everybody's like, "Oh, he's going to form a faction. He's going to have all these people in it." And it's six, the six people that have been the most relevant in his life. Right. Um, there's uh, the, yeah, the only upcoming projects they have is he gets an a special thanks on something called the Cult of Deception, which is just looks like a short film that's supposedly in development, but who knows what that is. Anyways, yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, the again that that uh, talk about somebody who just had all of the factors. Did they did they always write the best stuff and did they always put him in the best position? No, I think the biggest problem with that character was that he lost all of his main feuds. Like it felt like anyway. I'm sure in hindsight he didn't lose all of them, but I do feel like the problem with the Wyatt family was that Bray didn't win when it mattered. They constantly used him to give a baby face a victory. And that that's the last guy you do that to. He's the final boss after winning everybody. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it felt to me like they gave him way too many, too many losses to the point where I was like, yeah, Bray doesn't win. Right. You know, I love the character, but I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like this baby face should be afraid of him because every other baby face has had no problem beating him. Yeah. I feel like that, that was a bit of too. Yeah. That you go with this, Nothing's going to stop this guy. Like, he doesn't care. Right. He doesn't care. Yeah. Oh, he lost. Well, I care. Right, right. But we got... Yeah. With Bray, we, we definitely have a uh, watch long coming down the pipeline. Uh, or at the time of this release, maybe we it's already out there. I'm not sure. So sure. <laughs> we're still figuring out our, our calendars to all this. But, like, uh, you know, to re, I'm at, ad nauseum saying this, but Whenever we lose somebody, it's always best to one way to celebrate their life is to go back and enjoy their work. And you know what? And it, it's cra- it is crazy to think f- actually how much there is and how long he's around for. Because it, it Bray still feels to me, he kind of still feels like a new rising star. You know what I mean? Like when you hear he passes, I think like, oh gosh, like, and I think that's because we did know he still had so much left to give but Mm -hmm. at the same time like man that was he's been around for so long like that that stuff that we're talking about some of those things like we got to be pulling up on 10 years like when did like when did that poster that i was looking for was from 2014 yeah Yeah, so that's what that was just nine years so you figure like there's it's incredible how much of a career he he actually or legacy i should say and, and on tape that we can watch that he did leave behind yeah, and not just of the Wyatt family, him right. doing singles, him yeah, doing the other stuff that him, it's, him yeah, and he's, Matt. He's a fucking cool cat. The whole era with him and Matt was just so weird and fun, and 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 uh, 
you know, like I definitely feel like he is one of those people where, you know, for all the stuff that we don't like about Chris Jericho, one of the things that I think you and I both universally give him credit for is like constantly being able to add something, change enough to consistently stay relevant while not completely yes. losing whatever the last thing was. He never goes from A to Z. He, he's he gone from A to B, then from B to C, and then from C to D. You know, like, and I think, I think. Yes, in, I always yeah. am intrigued in loving a creative mind. And yes, yes. It's, and it's, I, I, I certainly never fault Bray in the WWE system to be like, oh, look at all this goofy shit he's putting on there. Because it seems like, yeah, at times it's it's him, and then at times it's, Oh, and then we'll do this. And then we, we built this. We did that. And it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't pitch that to you. Who came up with that? <laughs> right, right, right. Or, yeah. Sure. Hey, we're going to have this great match. Yeah. And then we're going to set you on fire. Oh. Right. Then what? But then what happens? Am I, am you melt. I gone? You melt. Just a little bit, though. Not all the way. But, but I don't know. Like the point, you know, the point I make is I feel like he had already been on that that uh, lineage of like changing little bits and, and, and tweaking things and evolving in ways to kind of figure out ways to stay fresh. And I think that when it was all said and done, I think he would have had one of those insane careers that, you know, that there's so many different chapters um, that are like so unique to one another, you know, that it's, it's such a shame. I feel like he had so much more. And I, 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 I agree. I think it's also pretty unique for a guy when we always want to make comparisons, right? Like it, it's the quickest thing to do. We look at Becky Lynch, we go, she's stone cold. We look at yep. LA Knight and we go, he's the rock. Yeah. Because we just want to make a quick comparison real fast to, to understand what they are. And they're going, hold on. There might be influences of these people, but no, I'm me and I got other shit going on. So don't tell me this, that I am, that I'm the next this. Right. Bray Wyatt certainly had, he's the next Undertaker. Yep. yep. He's the, he's the next dark character that's, that's this. So he's the next Undertaker when it's like, no, he's not. Mm. He's not even the next hybrid of Paul Bearer and the Undertaker. No. He's, he's, he is the next dark character that right. we have, but carved his own path and to shake that off, I think pretty quick. And, right. and to just be, he is Bray Wyatt. And at some point we're going to look at somebody and we're going to go, that's the next Bray Wyatt. Right. Which I think right. is, you know, one of the best things as far as his legacy can be that he is uniquely him. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, what do they say that, uh, 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 something is the best flattery, like, uh, uh, What's the the popular saying? Imitation. So it pretends to be you. Is yeah, imitation. Form of flattery. Yeah, there it is. Like, you know, while not necessarily wrestlers imitating other wrestlers, although some people argue that with L.A. Knight and Rock, but like, you know, uh, 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 while not necessarily complete imitations, they are definitely like, oh, I I pulled from this thing, and what better? How much kinder could you be to a person? They'd be like, what you did was so good that I want to take a little piece of that and make it my own and add to it. And, you know, like, yeah, and I think that's all any mm -hmm. wrestling ever is. Yeah. I that's mean, all, so much of art yeah. really. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think I, I also Except think for that Brock while, Lesnar, you know, cause he watched nothing. <laughs> right. Right. He's like, he's like, could it look like a deer's head exploding at the end of a scope? <laughs> cause that's the only thing I've ever seen. Um, what, what kind of art form huh? is that? Huh? Uh, that's exactly what the deer looks like. Uh, dinner. I will say, well, that's I will say form. like dinner. I will say despite where it went, I think the fiend was the most exciting thing in wrestling in a long, long time. Um, it unfortunately just went away that didn't really make sense. And it didn't have a, it didn't feel, it felt what started really carefully like the amount of time it took that we were doing firefly funhouse and like how slow that build was and how unique and weird and funny and and um you know and uh, uh, uh self-referential the whole like firefly funhouse match all of those things made it so that when it was time for the fiend to come out 
it was like, this is the coolest thing we've ever seen. The combination of all of the different things, like there were all of those, you know, like theories about every, the, the Tom thought. Savini mask. Yeah. Every, everything about it, about how like, oh, this was the two versions of him that he had to be. And he had to pry the kid away from the killer in order to survive mentally and all like this fun story that we, some of us just put on it. Um, it all felt like it was handled so carefully that once the fiend was here, I feel like they didn't know they, then they didn't have the plan anymore. And then it wasn't handled as carefully anymore. And then we got the, the nonsense with the hell in the cell with in Saudi with Seth and all those weird, you know, things that went straight. But I don't, I not for one story. It's I like think the that, big yeah. budget Hollywood blockbuster, right? Where it's, right. it's like what we hear about, uh, you, you make the big, huge success and then right. you go for the sequel it's like all right so you're gonna let me do the next thing and i i know what i'm doing right like no 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 same now thing the but studios bigger. involved right and they got ideas and executives are gonna tell you what to do like no 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 right. but they're not the creatives like bray's yeah. the one going i can't i came up with it I, right. I got it like yeah guide me it's like yeah but and have you thought me, about have you thought about limits? fire though <laughs> yeah and then yeah. you'll be impervious to pain and then you'll you'll walk through them it's like oh well then that's not interesting or what what's gonna happen like i'm sure bray was at odds but you know being a guy that works with him and everything and i yeah to your point like that's yeah it's a shame that it ended up that way but the fucking ideas and the 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 layered characters that he would present in whatever form it was it's either the fucking cult leader or the the playhouse host with the dark side to him it's yep he's got layers to it yeah. And then like even when like Howdy started that fucking design, like it's one thing to come up with one really iconic look. Do you know what I mean? Bray, even without yeah. ever even wrestling a match, Howdy was immediately like, oh, that's that's incredible. Like this, this visage is fucking fantastic. Obviously, really, it felt like it was really inspired by the black phone the Ethan Hawke movie by Scott Derrickson. Like it had that kind of vibe to it with the all white, but it was like, whatever it is he tapped into, it was awesome looking. And maybe it didn't go where we wanted it to go for a, who knows why lots of reasons, but you know, the sort of thing that I think could have been course corrected enough to be just as entertaining as the fiend when it was at its best. And um, selfishly, I wonder yeah. who the fuck that was. Yeah, same. And you know, not for nothing, but like we haven't really talked about like yeah, he obviously he left behind his his four children and and, and his wife and but he's got a brother who's a wrestler. And we you know, like this is a thing that like is this the sort of thing that uh in, to honor him his brother can pick up and do something with, not necessarily the character of Uncle Howdy or whatever, but just like you know, like, uh, you know, like, like honoring him. It's just one of those things where it's like, you know, when, you know, we associate the two of them together only by family, not on screen for any capacity, but right. we all know it's wrestling in the modern era. We all know like his brother is, is out there and is in this industry. And, you know, like, I don't know. I feel like it's just a unique thing that we like, I don't know. I haven't heard from him. I don't know if he's posted or, 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 or done anything. Obviously he it's still you? real, really new. No, he stopped. He stopped texting me once I stopped believing. And I, and I said, Bo, distrust is more like it. And he was like, that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't start with a B. And then we got into a whole thing about it. Then you, a thumbs down emoji. He's like, whoa, use your words. <laughs> yeah. I, that's that tricky bounce, right? Where you, you think of it like a Chavo, Chavo Guerrero situation where you go, yeah, well, you'll you'll be the reminder of Eddie, and you'll wrestle. And uh, wait, they're not exploiting you, right? They're not taking right. advantage of you. You're being who you want to be, and we're not putting our expectations like that. Tricky balance of help us remember, but be who you are. Don't Jim Belushi us, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, by the way, uh, uh. It's a complete sidebar, but since we're talking about tragic passion passing of young talents, uh, I watched the the Belushi HB. I think it was the HBO special or Showtime, the documentary about John Belushi. Yeah, have you seen that with like with like the animation of him as like a little kid and stuff? Oh my god, it'll wreck you! No. It's so good. 
really, really good, but sad, um, but also just like really well made and fascinating. And it's like the the inner child. It's all about kind of without necessarily saying it, it's all about the the exploration of how at, at the end of the day he was just wanted to make his grandma laugh and his mom like that's all he ever wanted. And it's fucking great and heartbreak. But I digress. Yeah, don't Jim Belushi it. <laughs> Back to your sentiment. But um, yeah, it's I mean it's it's uh. It's it's just a fucking bummer, but uh, I also like God. I feel Eric Rowan, Jesus Christ, like another guy who the, the the other brother, the brother that we do associate with him on screen with, like yeah. Here's a guy who like the two people. When you think of I, I still even though I know Brody Lee had his own single success, and and obviously you know Wyndham went on to create other characters. Like when I think of any one of those three, I immediately think of the other two. Like that to me, the Wyatt family was the, 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 you know, this perfect thing that they created all. And they were all so good in their roles that like, I, the, the ghosts that are just over this man's shoulder now, like literally to be that young in this industry and to Three have ghosts. lost, what do you say? Three who's ghosts. The, who's the third ghost? The, what was in the cage? It was the first one. Bro, uh, Brody, uh, Luke. Bray. Is there somebody in between that the two? That spider. Oh, the spider. Yeah, that's what I say. It was in the cage. Yeah, that would have been second, yeah. but yeah. I just, God, I just, that's I can't imagine. Hard. I can't imagine. I, I, I can't imagine. And what did WWE do with that spider? Died. None of this. I'll tell you that. No, no tribute no. show for that fucking spider. No, no, they really, they really screwed the pooch. Screwed the spider. Really, over on that. Screwed the spider. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I hope. The- I hope he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's got to be or, just or has a tough, support tough. system, right? I I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing as far as where he's wrestling. If he's working, I don't know. I don't know anything about like his career at the moment. But uh, yeah, I definitely hope that wherever he is, it's it's supportive. It sort of seems like a sort of thing where you take you, you, two different approaches. You either go, I can't be around this thing because every time I see a ring or step through a rope or take a fucking Irish whip, I think of them. Or you're yeah. the type, of, or you go the route where it's like, well, I need to be working and creating and doing the thing I love because it helps me process all of my trauma. And it's like a, you know, a, 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 a way to either take your mind off, not to take your mind off it, but you know what I mean. It's a way to fill fill your time with a positive energy. Or heroin. Um, that's that's what killed that spider. You don't you think it was crushed? Oh no. shit! The spider had a severe black tar heroin problem. Uh. I, I haven't watched the tribute show to both gentlemen, Terry Funk and neither have uh, I. Uh, Rotunda. And I had heard that Eric Rowan is there. And I believe even in this image behind me that he's at the forefront of it. And the part that I was so unnerved by, and I haven't seen it, mind you, I'm just thinking of a scenario that I don't know if it exists or not. Is they ask Eric Rowan to show up to the show. I'll pay tribute to his friend. In whatever interviews or what happens during the day or just talking to people and getting, you know, some being around familiar faces and just trying to be, have a good atmosphere. I can't help but fucking think of the carny weirdness of it all or whatever it may be that WWE invites you there. There's Triple H who's, you know, probably the point man for all this. Right. And talking to you going like, hey, you know, really sorry. Thank you for coming. Hugs and dealing and doing all that. And then they're like, hey, hope this helped in some way. And cool. And... All I can think is that I'm projecting and that's like, hey, could you hire me for a little bit or <laughs> could, there, right. could I have some security or do you want me around a little bit more? Like, nah, no, just for the night. Okay. See you later. Do you want to go get some food or they you actually know, Bray loved hot wings? Like, nah, I got to get on the jet. Uh, oh, the jet. That'd be real fast for me to get home. Like, ah, sorry. Can't. Scott, do you remember? Uh, I know it was a long time ago, but last week's show. We talked all about the talent who was let go from WWE and towards the bottom of the list, there are a bunch of names that we don't know. Yeah. One, one of those was actually uh, Eric Rowan. They, they, they did hire him. They hired him <laughs> right then and there on the spot, but they were like, listen, we don't want to just like, you know, uh, push like trauma and loss and hardship out there. So we're going to repackage you. We're going to rename you. They renamed him, and then they immediately let him go. Yeah. Oh my God. So if I go to a hotel and ask for guest. Abuli Abadi Fitzgerald. <laughs> yep. That's Eric Rowan. That's Eric Rowan. Yeah. And on Holy the Indies, shit. he's Abuli Abadi Redbeard. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Makes sense. Well, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the other, the other, uh, you know, the sad story. Obviously, a bit different in the fact that he lived a, a you know, a, a lo- longer life and left a huge legacy. Still, a, I feel like still died young, regardless. Um, but comes from that era of pro wrestling where, you know, it, 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 I think we were shocked that he lived as long as he did in Terry Funk. Seventy nine. Yeah. It's his age. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I still, I just, I, I guess that feels young to me, but maybe it's not. I'm not arguing it, it, it is or yeah. not. I, I'm just, I was pointing out the number and uh, clearly can't live long enough in Jay Lloyd Bagan's life. I don't know. I guess I always put every, I put everything in the comparison of like the, the older people in my life. And I guess I think of the people in my life who are in their seventies as like, well, they're not that young or they're not that old rather. They're also definitely not that young, but I meant to say they're not that old. But, but yeah, Terry Funk, I think, uh, you know, Terry Funk, I don't know if it's the same situation with you because I know you're from Texas and you were watching different wrestling when you were younger than people like me who grew up just a few years later and it was just all WWF on television as a kid. Like, I feel like I didn't really know who Terry Funk was until Mick Foley introduced him to me. Like same. that's oh, so it was the same for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was talking about this with my brother. Um, you know, shortly after Terry Funga passed, we'd we'd gone on our uh Arizona pinball trip and um I was talking about Terry Funga and we we just talked to general about like this this fucking weird anomaly of an upbringing of wrestling that we had living in Texas. Right. We lived next to where the Von Erics were fucking doing everything. They took over the town and did all that. We didn't know anything about it yeah no idea it was never on our tv never saw it like maybe in wrestling magazines we you know we saw nwa Wait. guys we saw like lex luger and flair but we never right. had seen them can we i only clarify saw black and white images can i clarify when you say never on our tv are you stating that it wasn't even available to you or that it wasn't on our tv like you didn't choose to watch it you know we had cable from what I remember, at least at around age nine or so, so that would have been uh, 1988, 1989, around that time. My So my brother was older, and he never remembers seeing it. Like, because when we would watch, we must have, he must have started watching right around WrestleMania f- 4. Right. Um, and... We get the tapes from the video store, so we definitely rent wrestling tapes, but we don't have any memory of seeing other non-WWF wrestling tapes. Never re- has any memory of seeing other wrestling, because we would have stopped to watch it. We would have seen what it was. So whether we had cable the whole time or not, like we didn't see it uh, on any other stations, whether it was not in our you know, fucking, I don't know what you call it, syndicate or, or right, yeah, yeah, the lo- your local package, the local, you know, syndicated uh, area, whatever. We we just never knew about free birds. We never knew about von Eric's. None of that. So we didn't see that. We didn't see. Like I saw Funk in a magazine. I think at one point that I re- I remember hearing about him, but I missed out on all that. Probably saw Funk in some tapes a little bit later when going back and watching other WrestleMania is young. So seeing Funk at WrestleMania two, I think it is, but not making an impression on right, it sure. in any way. And then it's not till the attitude era when f- there's some like chainsaw Charlie stuff. And then right. eventually ECW and it all starts to go like, Oh, well, who is this guy? Right. I, I, well, because I don't know if you did that thing where it's like everybody like comp, like JR and people like people that are on commentary or people that you're watching that are more in the know treat him with such reverence. Yeah. That like, this is a big deal. Like this is the legendary Terry fuck. When someone says this is a legendary person, you're like, you don't even know who the fuck they are. You go like, well, why are they legendary? What did they do? And what? Yeah. That didn't always work on me. Cause I, no. I'd hear that and I, I get that feeling momentum from Jr. Right. And then I'd see something and I go, Oh no, they're fucking terrible. Dr. <laughs> Steve Williams. Like I'd see all the, all the bad stuff of him. And I right. go, he's not anything. I, I'm not into this guy. Right. Vader. I'd always heard about Vader, saw the pictures of Vader, thought Vader was going to be the fucking coolest thing ever. Yeah. And we happened to rent the pay-per-view where he loses a match 
takes his mask off, looks at the camera, and goes, I'm a piece of shit. I'm a big old fat piece of shit. And my brother and I went, Yeah, Wait. I guess you are. <laughs> I love it. I hope that was your introduction to Vader. What yeah, if Vader what that if, was like when we finally got to see Vader? I like a, I like the idea that the to you, the character of Vader was just this guy who was just like has a lot of self loathing. And his whole gimmick is that he's like, he's just working through self-confidence issues and he loses his matches and he takes his mask off and he has the existential crises there in front of the crowd. Just a really progressive gimmick for the era. Let's be honest. He's this guy. He's like, oh, we know he punches people in the head for real and he, yeah. he doesn't think highly of himself. He's like, touting. Right. He was really, they were really trying to tell like a positive mental health story, which was just a decades ahead of its time. But Terry Funk was the guy that when all that was said and I'd see Chainsaw Charlie stuff, I go. Oh, okay, yeah, he's all right. But my right. focus was on Foley because Foley got me back in. Right, yeah. And it wasn't until, man, it's probably not too long into our watch long series is when Funk really starts to click with me. I hear more of the stories. I watch oh. more of his stuff. I see the I, interviews. And I, it's the it's the underappreciated thing. It's the thing I'm not noticing. I'm not really tapping into. I'm always looking at something else and I go, Cause I loved him in movies. Right. And then when I got to meet him in an interview and I'm like, yeah, I like this guy. I've always, I, I like him. Right. But then I started to go, wait a second. I think I love Terry Funk. Holy shit. Right, he's yeah. constantly surprising me. Yeah. I, I, I think I completely agree with you that I think a part of our watch long series, the, the times that he pops up, I, I bet you, if you listen to any one of the Terry Funk watch longs at some point or another, you're going to hear me go, Man, I want to watch more Terry Funk matches. Like, I'm pretty sure I say that literally every time. He has, he reminds me of Jake when you watch Jake when he's younger and you go like, there's something different. There's just a different wiring in there. And I'm going to argue, argue the same thing with like that Flair has. Like, there's a different wiring, which is maybe why like that match between him and Flair is just so, like that is such a great That feud. clash of champions. Yeah. The whole, the I quit. Right match there, and the lead up to that is that's what i that was the moment that finally sold me on it because when i finally right. watched that i went like the because i think you and i watched it separately from from that watch long the flair has this whole big match right like he has right. i think it's steamboat and it's funk right. is one of the judges yes and then afterwards it's like flair's talking and celebrating and funk comes up and he's wearing the tuxedo yep and going like hey i just want to say that was a really great match it's like hey well you're doing really great in hollywood and flair's being kind of dismissive like good for you right and it's but great this, to see you. But this is wrestling stuff I'm talking about. And he's like, well, he's I just, you know, I'd like to put it out there. He's being real friendly. Like, if you want to someday get in the ring with me and give me another shot at that title. And Terry going from the sincere, loving fellow competitor to this jealous, spiteful son of a bitch and turning on flair. <laughs> yeah. Because he turns into that guy, that fucking crazy guy that makes me not want to go into a bar. Right. Right. It's because it's that guy who all of a sudden starts yelling and smashes a pool cue and be like, what do you want, motherfucker? I'll fucking end you right now. There, it's and him and fun. him and Stan Hansen have that same like this is a legit fucking lunatic, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, it's he's laughing. Yeah. Every bar's laughing because you're supposed to because right. he's funny. Right. But, you know, what? also it's it's he's a bit of that Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. Okay. The the southern version because right. I was say, if Terry Funk's laughing, yeah. you're laughing. But if he goes, what what am I funny? Right. Like if you're to do that, no sir. Like, oh no, no sir. What do you mean, sir? Oh, no. What do you think I'm fancy? No, I don't think you're fancy, sir. I mean, not sir. I mean, I don't know. Please don't murder me. <laughs> but he's just such a he's he's such a fucking funny and sweet endearing man. Like I watched when I when I had COVID, I was just laid up and I'm like, well, I feel miserable. I'll watch. I'll watch Dark Side of the Ring. And I just caught up on a bunch of episodes. And one of the ones, um, I'm trying to remember the promotion's name, the uh, the Japanese one with all the death matches and all that. Um, I think FMW. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. And whenever they cut to Funk, and he's just, he's not treating these interviews like everybody else. No. He's not looking to give you the, the real story on it. He's just having a good time. Like, well, what would you want to tell... Uh, the guy who's running the 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 company right now, like, he just holds up his middle finger and smiles. And uh, then you go like, is he serious? Is he mad at that guy? Right. It's like, is that what you tell him? He goes, no, I love him. I think he's great. <laughs> that he's just, he's got that carefree spirit. Yeah. 
And I think that's something that b- both guys had that yeah. you see them as people that Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk had that They're- people fucking loved the, the, the people that worked with them and got to know them as right. people loved being around them. They were so much. They were joyous. There was so much joy in what they did, even when what they did was n- violent, <laughs> like and terrifying. Yeah, te- yeah and exactly. And then through the curtain, like, Hey, is that fun or what? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. There, I think that's, that's definitely a, a thread between the two of them for sure is they were both incredibly joyous and Terry. Yeah. Terry, like Terry played. And I guess to, to an extent, I'm sure Wyndham was the exact same way, but like, I think we have more proof of it because we have more video and we have more like Terry is just, he's more, he's more playful. He like, I think he's, he lives like a positive, very positive life at least later in his age. I know he struggled with a lot of stuff and family and whatnot like that, but like there's just this level of levity to him as a person, which a lot of wrestlers, especially of yesteryear, like they, he never, he doesn't take himself too seriously. He doesn't, there's not, he doesn't, this is the guy who should, or I should say could have the biggest chip on his shoulder. And we would go, yep, that's a big old deserved chip right there, but he doesn't have it at all. There's no fucking chip on his shoulder whatsoever. He did really yeah. well. He he's one of the first action figures I found out. Oh, really? That is that true? Through through a toy line in Japan, like a wrestling action figure. You mean specifically? Yeah, yeah. I was like, that, yeah, doesn't, yeah. that doesn't track. They kind of look yeah. like the Bendems. Um, oh, really? That were made. It's a it's a Japanese toy line. I remember it was talked about when Cornette was doing a tribute to him. They talked about it that uh, Brian Last brought this up and I looked it up. I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but he's one of the first to have a, a wrestling figure. And it's, you know, pretty good likeness for that right, style of sure. a simple wrestling figure tights and, you know, the face right. and the hair. And that in Japan, that he's just one of these beloved heroes, icons, the, yeah. all the different careers that he had. And right. I fucking love his Hollywood career so much because he would pop in over the top and right. Roadhouse and these movies I'd see. And I'd be like, he's great. He yeah. looks like a badass henchman that you don't want to fuck with because you're putting him in a bar. You're putting right. him in he's, the bad guy's office. He's also one of those guys where in wrestling, he seems, in the world where everybody is a, a mountain, he doesn't seem like the biggest, scariest guy, right? But you put him next mm-hmm. to your average movie star <laughs> and you realize, it's this happens a lot with wrestlers where you're like, you see a, uh, you see a wrestler out in normal life or by normal people and you realize... Oh, that that wrestler who we think is undersized and an underdog when he's facing the big show is still a massive giant human being. Yeah. 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 And Terry, Terry had that quality of just he could he, he, you'd love him, you'd hate him, you'd be afraid for him because he's middle aged and crazy and doing something that he shouldn't do, but it still seemed like he had some control when you're thinking there is none. Yeah. He's He's really wild, and his fucking album. I I was looking for it for his album the last year or so. Did I not know that he had an album out there? Yeah, he sure does. So it was released in Japan, and I think if not all the songs, uh, the vast majority of them are written by Jimmy Hart. Oh, I, I so I need you can to tell this. that real quick, yeah. In case you didn't even you didn't know that going in listening to it, right? And it's kind of that Shatner esque, like the talk singing. Yeah, the talk singing right. and it's it's weird, but that's how popular it is. It's like, right. well, hey, you want to make an album? We'll sell it. Right. Um, oh, he's terrible. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll we'll still sell this fucking thing. Well, listen, uh, you know, it, it, it is interesting that there's some similarities between the two men, uh, and uh, obviously, you know, Bray died so young that it's just it, it's it it feels so tragic and it feels like God, he had so much more to give, but he sure did give us a fucking ton. And obviously Terry, just go back and watch Terry funk matches. I don't, we're going to too. Like, yeah, I don't think there is, while I'm not going to say there are no bad Terry funk matches, Terry funk has never been bad in a match. I, there are some where I've gone, Oh, this might be a watch long. And I go, all right, I don't feel this is enough of something for a watch long. Right. Or it's maybe it's a little flat, but, I certainly don't not watch Terry throughout it. Right. You know he's, I mean, he's kind of mesmerizing. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. It's he, he is that he is what people uh, think from, from, from he's, he is what people think John Moxley is. <laughs> That's yeah. John Moxley really wants to be what Terry Funk 
is without without um, any work whatsoever just it's who he is you know who terry funk was as a person the fucking guy just turns it on it's a uh, and maybe for modern wrestling fans or, you know, wrestling fans of our generation that it, it is maybe follow that journey with us. Maybe you loved him from the beginning and you've always been into him and that's fucking awesome. Kudos to you. Um, it does seem like the, whether it's maybe fine wines or, you know, certain cheeses, but you, as you get older and you go, I just want to find the next thing. Like, yeah, I've had this, right. I get this. I get Bret Hart. That's fine. Yeah, I, I got it. I get that. I want to find the next thing. Like, what's the next nuanced oh, something? Terry Funk is it. Right. Terry Funk doesn't ever feel dated. No. I, no. I'm dying to go back right. and watch. I have yet to watch some of his, the tag team stuff with his brother. Like, that whole other career that we never right. touched yeah, on. Yeah, we don't. I don't know anything about it either. With yeah. with Dory. And um, Thank you. Seeing that whole era, because that's. That's a whole different style for him. Like he changes throughout the years. He changes his styles. He changes who he is. And that's the goody two shoes, best tag team wrestler in the world. Right. And that at one point that he shakes all that and then right. it becomes the single guy. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. So it's, there's so much untapped for Terry Funk for us on this show and it's not going away. Like I, I, re I restrain myself Right. From just going. Sure. Well, I got six Terry Funk right. matches. Let's just make it. Let's just Jake. do a Terry Funk. We'll we'll call it like uh, the the Funk you Funkin month. Oh wait a minute. Should it be Funk Funk in February? Funk fall. Oh okay, that's good too. I was just gonna say Funk fall. That way we could do more than four. <laughs> we could just do like the entire two months of fall. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, listen. The the main message here is go back and watch some Terry Funk. Go back and watch some Wyndham Rotunda. Go back and watch some Husky Harris because he was even fucking great back then. Yeah, the gimmick wasn't all together, but the matches are incredible. Um, and like, you know, these these men left us so much incredible artwork to watch. And I, I, I'm, you know, we're, we're very lucky that both of these men existed. Um, uh, it, and we get one of the best insults ever from one of them. Which is what? What does Terry Funk say? It's got to be Terry. You egg sucking dog. Uh, Egg sucking dog. I have thought about that so much and trying to think like, what is that? Well, but I fucking love it. No, nobody else other than a Texan could call you an egg sucking dog, and you go like, oh, bitch. Speaking of egg sucking dogs, it's time, Palskis, uh, for us to crown a champion. The 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 champion egg sucking dog. Um, for the month of October, it is the first episode of October here over on the Palskis program. And uh, if you're not sure what this is, well, each and every month we put all of the eligible championship Palskis names into the jar here, the uh, the Palski Battle Royal, um, and the winner is crowned the champion for the month. You get a free item of your choosing from the shop. You get your name and lights over at Dragon Wagon. I'm sorry, over at the Discord, and uh, of course uh, you get to pick a watch along for us. Um, I do want to acknowledge the current PW Cheap. PWP champ Mike Lucas, who was the champ for September. Mike, uh, he didn't have his uh, championship victory announced on air because we were off, so it was done on the uh, on the Patreon. Um, and uh, so Mike didn't get to have a full month of uh, being the blue champion in uh, in the Discord. So I just want to give him a special shout out, uh, Mike. Uh, you know, uh, we're sorry, but also, yeah, it, it happens. Um, <laughs> So without further ado, Scott Narver, would you like to see? But his watch along is still, yes. you know, it's it's going to be, uh, I'm all, I can't keep track of our calendars right now. It's right. out. It's coming out. It's a, it's a hell of a pick. I'll tell you that. It was Ooh. one I was going to pick. Mike picked it first. So I'm thrilled. All righty. And the jar went all the way. Jake fucking brought this jar <laughs> brought this across jar. the country. <laughs> this of jar. All the things he could have brought. This jar cost me $9,000 to move across the country. <laughs> This is a $9,000 jar. Okay. Uh, I have it in my hand here, but Scott has pointed out that sometimes I drop the jar out of frame and he's afraid that I'm like cheating or doing something. So I'm going to drop the jar. Because yeah. if Tamina this, is our fucking winner, then I know some shit's up and you two are in All the sack righty. together. And new PWP champ for the month of October is... AJ0314, aka Binary. It's 
the spooky champ. AJ0314. I still don't know. They're, well, they could be non-binary, to be fair. Uh, AJ0314, um, uh, who we, we have heard from once before, but is a, kind of one of our quiet, our quiet patrons. Aloof. Um, let's take a look here. I know that they have been a champion. I'll, let me add it to the sheet, too, because that's how I don't forget. Um, yep. It has been since... <gasps> wow! It's crazy how this happens. Oh, wait, never mind. This was October. I was going to say they were a champion of last September. I thought maybe it was the same month, but this is the October champ. So, yeah, it's been it's been a full year, um, uh, AJ. But uh, thank you so much for your support of the show. We'll go ahead and send a, a message. The last time, if you remember, AJ wrote us and was like, I'm out to sea. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you remember that when he was like, "Yeah, I'm out to see it," and we never got clarification on if he like was in the military or he just like has a boat and lives out there. No idea. You, early prep for the Jericho cruise. That's probably that. But uh, um, AJ zero three one four spooky champ. Uh, can't wait to see what uh, what they have in store for us. And uh, keep your eye uh, on uh, on your email to uh, obviously get your code and snag your free swag. Uh, from Dragon. Yeah, I'm Wagon. looking um, for their com. their previous watch long match too. Oh, you know what it was? What? It was uh, Diesel and Bret Hart at Survivor Series 1995. Oh, was that Bret winning it back? Wait, I'm trying to remember what that was. Was that a defense title defense championship WWE championship match? It was a WWE championship match, and I think it was uh, Diesel defending because he had won it at the at, at like Madison Square Garden in a house show. Sure. Okay, let's just say yes. Anyways, uh, thanks to everybody who continues to support the program. Um, and uh, once again, if you would like the opportunity to become champion yourself, you got to become a championship level Palski over at patreon.com slash PWPalski. Scott, we should go take a hotline call before we wrap up for this week's program. Um, so uh, live stream, we're going to leave you for the evening, but thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Scott, say goodbye to live stream. Bye, you egg sucking dogs. 747-666-5606. That is the number of the Pro Wrestling Palskis hotline. Or you can send a voice memo to hotline at pwpalskis.com. Scott and Arvid, you want to see what the hotline has in store for us this week? Yes, I've been missing it. I need it. Well, let's not make you wait any longer and let's give it to you. Hey, fellas. This is Alice Rader, a.k.a. Invasion and a.k.a. Invasion. Uh, calling you from Ohio, heading home from a three-hour job interview I had today. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I dropped the fact that I was a two-time champion uh, <laughs> in the Get to Know You section of my interview. <laughs> yes. Uh, they seem delighted. I don't think they've ever had one before. So hopefully you guys will help me get a job. Just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm using my influence for good. Uh, I hope you guys are all right. I hope to hear from you soon, but I also hope that you guys are doing better. I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe wherever you're at and whatever you're doing, guys. Bye. Eve Schwa, dropping, putting, adding, all right, listen, adding your championship reign, your PWP championship reign to your actual resume getting to know you that is next level fucking palski right there that is like i i now i need to know where else people are placing their uh their championship reigns in ways that adds them that adds accolades to them well first off that's got to go on a fucking tinder profile Oh, a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. 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 Big PWP champion, four time PWP champion, two time PWP champion. I, I can't, I am so blown away by it, it going like, well, you want to get to know me. Right. I'm, gonna add, I'm add so that curious. In. I'm so curious. Did they ask like, what the hell does this mean? She's cause she said that they, you it was said, three they, hours. They got a laugh. It was a three hour long conversation, which by the way, and I'm, I, I hope that it, maybe I hope that this happened that I'm not, wrong here but like if you spoke with someone for three hours you got the job right like they're not going to waste their time for three hours on somebody who they didn't like the first hour right i mean she, this could be she could be applying at control your narrative <gasps> oh shit 
you know, and in fairness, in fairness I do be, think I do think our title has more weight in the industry than their stuff. EC three talks possibly for three hours to get to know people. Three's in the in the name. She did say it was a three hour conversation, but maybe it was a three hour like oration. Maybe she was just listening the entire time. Could be. I um, I, 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 I am so, so thrilled that she didn't list us as references. Number one, that's great because <laughs> that's going to be bad because. You don't want us to. You don't yeah. want to. Jake's not going to get your name right first off. <laughs> I'm going to be like, who, Andrea? Tell her to say hi to Kane for me. It's like, don't say that. No, it's control your narrative. Kane doesn't know. They're all bad. And uh, Let's I'm be just, honest. I'm, Kane I'm, would fit in fine at control your narrative. <laughs> no, because you want to run the thing. Uh, they'd let him. You have a many C3. Good point. Uh. I I am I am tickled by this. I that's fantastic. I I do hope all for the best that this job. If you want this job, it's not just something like you're settling right, for that course, you yes. you get this job. Absolutely, and you, you highball them. I in in fairness, it seems like maybe this was one of the messages we got during our break because she said like you know she's looking forward to hearing from us. She hopes that we're doing well and whatnot. So there's a good point that by the time uh, this air is here, that we'll know that she's already known. So VP of control your narrative. Yeah. Let us know. Uh, VP C Y N. Um, fantastic. Love you to death. That's fucking great. Uh, uh, that'll do it for this week's program kids. Hey, you know, all the places, uh, pwpowskis.com. It's your one-stop shop for the shop and for the discord and for a link to the Patreon where you can support the program, uh, by throwing us just a couple bucks each and every, uh, month. Uh, Scott Narver, what do they get for some of their hard-earned dollars? Well, what you get is, first off, the satisfaction in knowing that Jake could return to California in <laughs> the next six years. They don't care. I think they do if they've <laughs> the listened sh- up to this point. The show's no different. No, I meant like where I am. The show's no different from... Well, if, I, if I'm in studio... That is true. I do. I am. I am. I, am, I miss you. We got to record like two quick sessions, I believe right before I left. And I was really sad. Cause I was like, Oh, this was so fun having you in person. Yeah. And then I, my brain every so often goes, all right, I gotta get, I gotta get the fuck out of here for a day. Right. How do I get a, Oh, I'll plan with Jake that I'll come up and do a watch long set. Motherfucker. He's gone. I mean, listen, you could get to New York. Hey, listen, you can get to California. It only costs 9,000. You still not come over. It only costs $9,000 to get It does here. for you. But if you drive and uh, just make sure that uh, you just uh, do the flatlands. Uh, so let it be known that, you know, it was covered on a, on a pre-show recently, but there was unexpected expenses uh, <laughs> to a to a unnerving degree that Jake has, has endured uh, to to, you know, go out to the East Coast to relocate uh, for for a period of time and to help out family. That's how good of a person he is. He's not doing it for himself. He's not going out to the to the clubs in New York, you know, hooping and hollering it up. No, he's helping out family. And there was a, there was a lot of expenses with cars and trailers and hitches, not the Will Smith kind. So it's, you know, all this stuff goes a long way. So that first off, you'll be a good person. Helping out Jake. <laughs> Secondly, you're going to get monthly watch alongs. And uh, in the month of October, Week- weekly. Weekly watch Oh, sorry. Yes. Weekly watch alongs. Um, and in the month of October, we, we've got a little backup in our, in our, uh, championship watch long. So you're going to hear a couple of the, of the champs picks for watch longs. Nice. Um, and we've got other fun stuff, the best, worst, all kinds of matches all across the board. And, um, so you get that, you get some, um, depending on what tier you're at, you can get some free merch. You can get your name in the lights on our Discord, a free of charge service of the Discord. You can just join up and have have your name and lights there if you're the the champ winner. And you can also get access to our pre shows and the entire catalog of everything on Patreon. Since we've started this thing, it's um, immediately unlocked. You get your own RSS feed, so whatever listening device you listen to, all your shit on, it it all goes there. Right. So you're just also, right it up. It's all simplified for you. Also, um. If I'm not mistaken, by this point in time, Patreon has rolled out trial subscriptions. You can what? now you can now get a free trial of 
the Pro Wrestling Palski's Patreon uh, at any given tier where you can access. Obviously, a trial of being a championship Palski will not enter you into the contest. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. But um, you get access to Terms all of the and conditions apply. Yes, exactly. But you, you can get access to um, the catalog for a short period of time. And I, I urge everybody to go give that a shot. If you're listening to the show, listen, we see the numbers. I so you can go be a, a sneaky bitch for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, just a no. I think less than a week. I think you get seven days from that. For mistaken. seven days, you can be a sneaky bitch and go yeah. and try and do it all before the credit card gets you. So like your <laughs> show time and your max, you'd be like, oh, I, I want to watch the show. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak in real fast. I'm gonna do it, and then I think it's safe to say, sneaky bitch, you get away. I think it's safe to say that if you try, if you want to listen to everything, every single thing that's in the Patreon, that it would take you more than seven days straight. I think there's more than seven days worth of material there. I, I dare think. you, you new sneaky bitches to try and go in and listen and All watch every beginning. single thing in time. And you let us know, did you, be, did you beat the credit card clock or not? Of course, I do hope that uh, now that I've said this out loud on the podcast, that this is indeed true and that it has occurred. Um, and that it's not just a, a, a fever dream or that I'm not confusing it with a different Patreon account that I have. But anyways, uh, do that. Head on over to Patreon. There's also discounts if you sign up for the entire year. Yes, there's that. You can also sign up uh, uh, for ahead of time for a discounted rate where you essentially are getting a month free for every year. Um, so if you're like, hey, I know you guys. I know I'm going to be listening for the next year. Then uh, do that and you'll get a whole month for free. Um, and keep in mind the holidays are coming up. And if you're like, oh, my God, I don't need more wrestling gear this that and the loved ones like what can i get you tell them to get you this tell them yeah. to tell them go like i don't spend my money you spend money on my hobby yeah and, you and have them sign you up for a, a amount of time like it's a great and gift. listen especially because let's be honest uh if you become a championship palski listen to how many repeats there are at this point like you're gonna you're gonna end up with some merchandise <laughs> it's a guarantee mm-hmm. if you're in it for long enough um, I say that I, there might be one or two people who still have never won and they're like, that's not fucking true. You assholes. Anyways, Fuck I digress. Um, Scott Narver. The other thing that they get, of course, is a big old hearty. Thank you from us. So let's thank our current Patreon Palskis. Oh, who is it? Jeff or Matt? It's Matt. It's always Matt. Oh, Matt's always available. Yeah. Well, thank you to all of our Patreon Palskis. The only show where you get a retribution and a maximum male model name. So thank you to AJ0314, aka Binary, aka Matrice69, aka the current PWP champ, uh, Alex Pierce, aka Figs, aka Zitoys, Alice Raider, aka Invejoie, aka Invasion. Oh, I did that backwards. <laughs> that was strange. That was strange. I don't know why I read, uh, aka uh, <laughs> the VP of CYN. Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. Achu Detest. Curtis Mason, a.k.a. Hurtis. Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Battelle Underus. Mass Lama, a.k.a. Spitz, a.k.a. Jakara Lover. Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, a.k.a. Too Much Husk. Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, a.k.a. Luge Testicle. Suicide, a.k.a. A.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek. Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue De Fuse. Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, and Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Grisois. And may I further add another thing that you could do that you should have done in all this time while we were off air. Uh, Pinch, available to purchase and to rent on Amazon. It's Jake's feature film starring Jake Lloyd Bacon and featuring a, a vibrant John Quasto. With very healthy knees, because he was the very catcher, healthy, was he not? Very healthy knees, yes. I think they were immediately torn down afterwards. Terry Funk almost had the role, but he went he with the yeah. went, went with the young John Quasto. Also, Dave Made a Maze is available on a, a whole bunch of shit. You can buy it too, but I think it's on Peacock still and a bunch of stuff. It's uh, I'm in a movie uh, with with John Morrison. If you like abs, and if you're if you're a fan of classic comedy, uh, Scott puts on a clinic in that movie, like vaudeville level. Um, fantastic physical comedy. Scott cr- fucking crushes it. And he, well, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do that without Frank Coyote. Um, uh, my, yeah, my uh, Hardy or Laurel. Laurel, yeah. Was, oh, well, you got to stick with Hardy because of the wrestling reference. Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. then I can't say Matt or Jeff. Um. All right. Um. Uh. uh thanks you. Thanks you, everybody. Um, thanks for you, all, Tamina, for, for all of your stuff. 
and all of your things and happy spooky season. And yeah. we uh, uh, will we'll be coming at you with all the good stuff that you usually expect from us. Um, you know, we're back to the swing of things now. So hopefully there shouldn't be any hiccups um, like there were during <laughs> the chaos. But That's also right. life is happening around us here in New York. Wait, wasn't that a lyric from Hamilton? Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us. It's always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Powskis. Hi there. My name is Steven Sable. I'm a theater producer, director, and actor of the stage who truly loves the works of William Shakespeare. We all know the writer and his legendary stories and sonnets and poems. A writer who took risks, exposed truths, and placed a mirror to the world and culture of his era. But who was Shakespeare the man? Wasn't that long ago that I discovered the answer to that question isn't as clear as I had always been told. Was he the grain dealer with a name that kind of sounds like Shakespeare, who never bothered to teach his own children to read? Or was the Shakespeare name itself a pseudonym used to protect the identity of a secret nobleman writing for the crown? Join me as I explore literary history's greatest mystery on my podcast, Don't Quill the Messenger. It's a part of Dragon Wagon Radio. You can find it now at don'tquillthepodcast.com and all available podcast platforms. It's Dragon Wagon.